Welcome everyone, welcome to Neanderthal Museum in Germany. Annyeonghaseyo. My name is Till Knechtges, I'm an archaeologist and museum educator here at Neanderthal Museum. I had the greatest pleasure to visit the John Gokpur History Museum and its festival back in 2016. It was my greatest joy to follow the kind invitation of Lee Han Yong and experiencing your magnificent work over there. When he told us about his video project due to the festival cancellation of this year, we were absolutely thrilled to get on board. In the next few minutes I'd like to show you around, tell you about Neanderthal Museum and how we adapt to COVID here at the museum. Ready? Let's go! The Neanderthal Museum was built in 1996. A few years earlier, in 1856, quarry miners found some special bones while working in the various caves that could be found here. On this occasion they found 16 bones that were given to Johann Karl Fuhlroth, a local naturalist. He was actually the first one who understood that these bones are from a kind of older species of man. This idea, this concept was still young. It was three years before Charles Darwin published his famous book, The Origin of Species. Fulroth's ideas in the Neander Valley mark the beginning of paleoanthropology as we know it today. Here at Neanderthal Museum, we of course talk about Neanderthals. We are an archaeology and evolution museum. We always ask ourselves, what makes us humans? Why not find out more about reciprocity with nature? ecology and how we interface with the natural world. And we find clues in the natural sciences, as in paleogenetics or climatology, for example. But of course, as well, in philosophy. Let's have a look. This is one of my favorite installations, the River of Humanity. What you see here is the skulls of various different species. Species that reach back up to several million years. In the front you see some reconstructions made by the Canis brothers. This, for example, is the first Homo sapiens in Europe. Or the Turkana boy from Kenya. And my personal favorite the world-famous Lucy. As you might know, Neanderthals and us, the modern humans, had babies together. 2010, the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology successfully sequenced some nuclear DNA from Neanderthals. We, as humans, inherited Neanderthal genes. Just recently, there were some papers published mentioning that a few Neanderthal genes relate to the cause of disease of COVID-19. So, that has definitely something to do with us. This guy, actually, is a reconstruction of the Neanderthal that was originally found here 165 years ago. As you see, with his shirt and haircut, doesn't look so different from us. What paleoanthropology and paleogenetics tell us is that we as humans share common stories. Stories of migration, stories of adaptation, and in the end, the story of interconnectedness and life. COVID-19 changed a lot in our world. We are in this competition together. Germany right now struggles with the third wave and high infection rates. Our museum is closed right now. And this changed multiple times over the past few months and we took various action in protecting visitors from infection. But being out of your comfort zone is always the time for growth and progress. And as on this video project with you, we more than ever reach out across borders, not just in Europe, but worldwide. In the early days of the pandemic, we produced on-demand content for our website and for YouTube. 
Stone Age and human evolution are part of the German school curriculum, so we addressed our first videos to them. Last fall, we started to offer live online guided tours as well, via Zoom. Using our museum's Wi-Fi, an iPhone, a gimbal and Bluetooth headset, we developed programs for all kinds of groups. In these dialogical tours, we chat about human evolution and Stone Age with groups from primary schools up to university. More than in these on-demand videos, it's possible to truly get into contact with people, to listen and to respond to questions. It's this live feature that makes it so special and in a way exclusive. I am personally really looking forward to the International Museums Day when we have some shared guided tours with our partner museums in Grotta di Fumane and Muse in Italy and the Urmu in Blaubeuren, Germany. But what about our hands-on workshops? We also do workshops with school classes concerning human evolution, for example. In these dialogical workshops we focus on human skulls and the development through evolution. The goal of these workshops is to introduce into morphology and skull features through observation, noting and comparison. We also rent takeaway boxes with skulls to school classes where we tune in by ourselves as an avatar in the classroom. Let's continue our tour outside. The sun is shining right now. Join me on the trail to the original discovery site. Now I'd like to show you a little bit more about the surrounding area, the actual discovery site here and what else to explore in our valley. The Neander Valley, as you can see today, is completely different from the one Neanderthals experienced. Due to industrialization in the 19th century, the whole valley was completely destroyed by mining. The local limestone was important to the iron production, so the valley was destroyed in just a few decades. It was on this occasion that the miners found the original Neanderthal bones. In the old days, you have to imagine a narrow canyon. 800 meters long, 50 meters deep with steep stone walls to each side and in there a dozen caves. The canyon as it was is long gone, but some locals say that until today there are still some caves to discover. Now we are at the original discovery site, the so-called Rabenstein, Crow Rock. It's the last piece of rock that wasn't destroyed. Let's check out the discovery site. The red and white sticks mark the position of the old cave. And as you see, it's gone. You have to imagine a cave oriented in the direction of the river. In there, what was probably a Neanderthal burial site. The sticks mark an excavation that took place in 1997 and 2000 this ex excavation relocated the clay that was thrown out of the cave by the miners in 1856. And in these disturbed layers there were bones. Bones of another Neanderthal woman and a child, dating back to almost the same time. As well as material from other Paleolithic periods. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you Li Han Yong for putting it all together. We are very much honored to be among friends like you. Take good care, be healthy, and I wish you all the best from the bottom of my heart. Thank you and goodbye. Kamsamnida. Bye.